I said, I want to be a pop star. I want to be a singer. I want to be an actress. And the girls just laughed at me. I always wanted to be like the next Whitney. When I seen Little Kim on TV with the Junior Mafia, I knew that one day I wanted to be like that lady so bad. Honestly, it's been Mariah Carey. I've always been a big Superman fan. This is, it's weird for me because I, I really did dream of being Donald Trump. Yeah, at age 10, I really just wanted to be the composer Yanni. <laughs> I just wanted to be a beautiful woman. Well, um, Christopher Street. All roads led to Christopher Street. I had heard of uh, Greenwich Village, and I got here, and I went up to a stranger, and I said, can you tell me where Greenwich Village is? And he goes, uh, you're in it. Nobody's born on Christopher Street, but there is a culture. You know, there are similarities with the personalities. You know, you mesh and you, you make them your family. But there's not like a gate or something that you walk into. <laughs> so Christopher Street for me is where I got my beginning. And it was the heart. It was my heart because it was so warm. Growing up, you didn't really have people who accepted you for being trans, being gay, being lesbian or whatever. And for me, Christopher Street or the West Village was like the hometown for us. But I always had a home to go home to and some of these people didn't, you know? From very early on, um, when I was young, I felt, you know, trapped. I felt like I was caged. And so, um, you know, prison was nothing different. I always noticed something different about me. I started playing with Barbie dolls and started playing with Barbie houses. And from there, I'm like, okay, well, I want to be a woman. At four, I told my mother and father that I was a boy. I wasn't comfortable with the body that I was assigned at birth. That was like my first awakening that I was not who I thought I was. I really wanted to not wear a dress. I wanted to wear a suit. Being trans is about your body and kind of like that place in time and sexuality is like who you're attracted to. They really didn't understand what being transgender was because I think they thought it was more of a sexual orientation like being lesbian, gay, or bisexual. Um, when they saw the physical features and my face starting to change and everything, they saw, okay, this is a big difference from just me liking females. When I finally found out about this community and found out that transitioning was something that was actually possible because I did not know. I automatically knew like this is what I need to do. They had told me that, Dave, we would love you no matter what. Once the psychologist also told him, no, it's not a face, he's really in, in the wrong body and he's going to do this, um, he was also very supportive. Like everybody around me, I'm, th I'm very lucky. It's all personal. It's all how you feel inside. I felt like I had to become a female. I can see it's hurting you. I can feel your pain. It's hard to see the sun shine through the rain. There's still this very rigid understanding of gender. What is gender? There's not a I guess full scope of discussion around that. In society, if they see you as a man, they still see you as a man. And if they see you as a trans, they will see you as a trans. Being trans is an act of being truthful, being who you are. So sitting next to me on the train or at work or on the bus, you won't have an issue because I have a privilege of passing. And one thing that's always bothered me is like people are like, oh, you're so passable. And I go, possible is what? I'm a girl. Most girls think, oh, I'm gonna be a woman now. You know, I, everything's gonna change. It doesn't. It, it's very hard to make people realize your sexuality of what you are behind your, your clothes. It was always just myself wanting to live my truth and be happy and live and look in the mirror and see what I always saw internally and in my mind since I was young. I first knew I was a girl back when I was four or five. I used to go to the medicine cabinet and I used to take out my mom's nail polish and makeup and I used to just doll myself up. My friends said to me, uh, yeah, okay, you were that little boy with the girl's name. That's how they saw me. 
Um, my mom said I used to take uh, other little girls' clothes off and put them on. <laughs> I would wear the towel and wrap it around my head and walk around our house feeling like this is my hair. And it got to the point that my mom asked me, how come you always wear that t-shirt in your head? I said, mom, this is my hair. I'm a girl. I remember growing up my entire life and being four or five years old and having dreams. And always in my dreams, I was male. What I used to do was a prayer every time at nighttime before I would go to bed that when I would wake up and I would look in the mirror that I would see a girl staring back at me. Eighth grade is when I just kind of was like, you know what? Y'all begging me to wear a, a dress to prom. This will be the last time I wear any female article of clothing. This does not fit me. And I'm dedicated to that image of a masculine image from that point forward. And when I put on a wig because I had short hair, I was like, I saw myself. I didn't want to see this other like person. I saw myself. It never made sense to anyone because I never had any association with that. Like I said, growing up in the South, people are very much like man, woman, straight, heter it's very heteronormative societies. If you are a trans person in this culture, you are automatically resisting. Like, I knew I was different, but there was no representation of other people like me. You know, the only thing that I saw was drag queens, none of which I could identify with. So for a long time, I actually felt like I was like this really strange phenomenon because I just didn't have anyone that I could turn to or relate to. Sometimes people would misgender me long before I ever came out. Um, and it made me so happy and I had no idea why. When I first came into the city, when I got off the train, I saw these trans people downstairs and I just walked around and I just was creeping in corners watching them and picking up things that they were doing and how they were acting. It was just so exciting and I realized who I was. It wasn't until I was about 15 that I came across people who were trans and I was basically educated on the fact that it's, it, it, it was able to happen. And I said, whoa, this is possible? So this is what I want to do. It was something I wanted from day one. I decided that I cannot just stay in that body. My real true role model then was Angel because she transitioned first before I did. And that's the reason why I had the courage to live the life that I have right now. When I was 18, I first saw a TV show something about transsexuals, on the transgender on TV, and um, that was my point of no return, that's what I call it. And I was trying to express it in the way that I felt comfortable, and I think that made my family a little bit um, alarmed. I was afraid to tell my family when I transitioned. I was afraid mainly what my mother would feel, and uh, Honestly, she was wonderful about it. Um, I had for a while been going over to my grandma's house like every every month or so. You know, I came out to her, I told her that I was trans and um, that I wanted to be a girl. She, she didn't even really like hesitate. She just looked up at me and like looked me in the eyes and she said, then I know that one day soon I'm gonna have a beautiful granddaughter. But then I came out to the kids, you know, my nieces and nephews, and, you know, bless the mouths of children, you know. Uh, so I, you know, told them that I was trans, and, and their response was, so does that mean you're going to grow tatas? And I said, yes, that might mean that I grow tatas. I remember having a conversation with my sister, asking her, when did I, did I actually come out when I was young? And she just kept on telling me, every time we would take your Barbie away from you, you would just keep on crying. So why would we want to see you cry? You just wanted to play and be yourself. So at a certain point, they realized that they just have to let me be the person that I am. I know I'm one of the lucky ones, you know, because of the acceptance that I've had with my family. So my mother, she was scared and she was crying like me when I told her, but she was supportive from day one. My father, that was uh, kind of... My mother 
automatically made it about her was the first thing. It was a bunch of crying and, oh, what have I done? What did I do to make you this way? And She raised the son, you know, so it was really hard on her when I transitioned. We stopped talking for two years. I asked her for her help and she turned her back on me. It took me two years to get the hormones because my family wouldn't allow me to. And I wanted so badly to be accepted by them. They had me go to psychiatrists from the age of nine until the age of 16 because they felt that something was wrong with me. He was also scared and he hoped that um, the psychologist, you have to go to a psychologist first, and he hoped that um, they will tell me or tell us that th this is just a phase and it, it, they, can, they can switch it off or they can switch my mind. I was punished um, for dressing up in girls' clothes. I um, was punished for painting my nails. I was punished for acting out in ways that were considered feminine. It was um, the day before Christmas, actually the night before Christmas. I remember being at mass, just thinking about like, you know, running away or, I mean, what's, where is this life still gonna bring me if I can't even be myself? When you're trans, the people that know you, your family, people that you've grown up around, they sort of have their narrative about who you are. And when you decide to change that narrative by coming out as trans, they resist it. I lost my family completely. I don't really know why. Everyone who's with you transitions with you. Your entire life as you transition, all your relationships transition with you. I ended up having a total breakdown at around the age of 24 um, and realized that I was at a point where really I had no choice, um, that I needed to either transition and live authentically or I was going to binge eat, binge drink myself into an early grave, basically, literally. Being that I've been out on my own since 13, I already had that headstrong attitude in return to them. Like, if you don't accept me, it's not gonna make or break me because I'm gonna do what I wanna do regardless. And if you're not gonna transition with me, you're just not gonna be existent in my life. They gave me an ultimatum. Either you stop trying to be a woman or you leave. So I took the I leave part. Christmas Street is where my life began. Not my existence, but my life. When we first came to New York, the Christopher Street Pier is where she brought me to, and I met all these different fabulous people, and. They kind of embraced me as one of their own real quick. Literally, Christmas Street became my home. I lived on the pier for years because I had nowhere to go. I found Christopher Street, and I think the day that I was there was the second day I was in New York, and I walked down the street and I thought to myself, this is where I belong. I was never supposed to be anywhere else. The first time I went there was with a group of friends. They walked me down and I'm passing by all the different, the gay bars and the, and the different fetish shops and also the Stonewall Inn. Like it's, it's so beautiful seeing all of the, the gay pride flags and throughout all of the store shops. Whereas where I'm from in the South, like you can get a brick through your window for, for stuff like that. Christopher Street, symbolizes for me freedom and expression, open to be who you are and whatever it is you wanna do. In 2011, um, at the LGBT Community Center, I was in a trans masculine support group 
And that's where all of my trans male friends are from, actually. So I can't separate Christopher Street from my transition. They go hand in hand. When I arrived at Christopher Street, it was very scary. That pier didn't look like it does now. It was just cars and people doing all kind of ungodly things. Back then, there was no dancing in the bars. We didn't commingle. The women's bars, men's bars. And never the twain shall meet. Back then, a lot of heartache, too. There wasn't marriage equality. There wasn't, you know, everything that the younger generation has now is because somebody fought for it. The, the new generation, they come down here to this fancy pier and the new buildings that was put up, the pretty, the pretty site, the gentrification of the village. They weren't down here when the police used to beat us up and chase us and lock you up. They weren't here for that. It was just horrible, but we had no other place to go. This was our safe haven with regardless to all the negativity that was still here because we were family. And when you have an adopted family and you love them and they care about you, you hold on to that. When I didn't have family for two years, my friends from the support group became my family. Um, I went to Thanksgiving with them. You know, we would talk, we would cry together. Trans people and gender non-conforming people are forced to find family and redefine family. What does it mean to have a family, to have a community that want to support you, that want to love you for who you are? And that's one of the biggest advice that I have for young trans kids is that find that. We met during a barbecue at a mutual friend's house, and then he added me on Facebook immediately. <laughs> well, okay, that's like an abbreviated version of it. This is Francis. Uh, we've been together for seven, seven years. years. He was totally unique. Like, I, there was no sort of frame of reference in my mind for anyone who I'd ever met that was like him. Finding a romantic partner for trans people is, is this critical conversation, you know. Um, a lot of the unfortunate murders that happens with trans people that we see is usually their intimate partner. It's kind of like hard today because it's like you, you're so close to surgery and so much else and you know there's so much behind you that they don't know and that they don't want to know usually most guys. I'm attracted to, you know, kind of individuals who really understand and get what it means to be uh, transgender. You know, people who can really own uh, a relationship with somebody who is uh, trans feminine. I currently have a boyfriend and I'm his first transgender partner. Um, I remember him saying, I'm gonna post our photo together on Facebook and I'm like, they're gonna know you're dating a transgender woman, and he didn't care. It is very important to find somebody who will be positive um, influences in our lives. I am in a relationship. I am engaged to Christina Taylor. She supports the trans community wholeheartedly. She's like our number one ally. Find a space where you could be authentic as the person that you are. My oldest brother is gay. And then Angel is the third. She's um, a girl like me. She's actually more brave, and she has more courage in doing things. But we're there to really support each other. And I, I love her. I really, really, really love her. I would do anything for my sister. And society puts boxes on people. You have to be male, or you have to be female. And you shouldn't. You should just have to be human.